I go, uh, I go in, uh, well, it's not in the particular African language, but it's used around uh, Mawufe, uh, that is the, the uh, Aja word for uh, Africa, Mawufe. But I go is like to get someone's attention. And the response is I may. So you walk in a room, um, and you say I go, and people like people talking are busy. I go, you're trying to get their attention because you got something to say or whatever. Uh, I want want your uh, presence to be known for whatever reason. The response is I may from the people. Uh, that means you have my attention. I'm listening. My, my, you know, okay. Unless they don't like you, they probably still keep keep talking or whatever. But um, so. You all, and this is this is for directly for mobile people. Nine times out of ten, I'm sending this to somebody I personally know. Uh, even though this is on YouTube, this is um, one of those. Uh, this would be one of those videos uh, only if you have the link. You can see it. It's not public uh, to that degree. So you all re remember um, last year, last European year. Well, it was last year for us too. Our year starts on the on the. Uh, on the equinox, on the vernal equinox, spring equinox. So anyway, we talked about a lot about Miss Miss Fortune, uh, Floretta Grayson F Fortune. Don't forget that name, Floretta Grayson Dash Fortune. We all simply knew her as Mrs. Fortune, right? And what a fitting name, even though it's in the English language, for a woman that has given that give, gave so much to people like myself. People that's watching this video, if you play sports, and uh, uh, city league uh, sports, growing up in Mobile, Alabama, in particular, a, a close enough proximity to Tomoville, and we're gonna correct that in a minute because actually correct it now because it wasn't she wasn't just at Gargas Park in Tomoville, she was at Carver Park. Uh, she inspired even though she was on the Carver Park Gargas Park uh, side, if you will, or the sideline. She was on everybody's sideline. If you played for Peters Park like I did, uh, JRT like I did, Joe Rafa Thomas Rec Recreation Center, Duval, Crawford, uh, Kid Park. Um, we mentioned Carver Park. I think it's called Aaron Park now, which shouldn't. I agree with one of my friends, uh, uh, Sammy. Sammy said uh, that park should not be named after him, and that is true because that guy, he didn't even really acknowledge Mobile like that. Um, so anyway, uh, R.V. Taylor, you know, uh, Baltimore, Baltimore Projects, they had a park, you know, a team and, and a field. Um, all, those, all those are city parks. The city simply literally means, you know, new African, so-called black people. That's where we played. The county league, uh, and it's different now from what we understand, but the county league was, was, was a bunch of, bunch of crackers, you know. Uh, they were scared to play us. You know, we remember not to dive, 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 uh, uh, not to, but to divert too, too tough, too long here, but we remember we, we played for Peters Park. We was on the first team at Peters Park. I played running back. Um, the other running back was uh, Terry, Terry Boney. I went on to play for Williamson. Um, Lil James was a qu quarterback. Anyway, uh, Batman played uh, wide receiver. But anyway, uh, so we was on the not only on the first team uh, at Peters Park, but we also was was the first team to ever play us in Duval Park. Was the first two uh, uh, teams to ever play um, inner city teams, if you will, to play the county league at Last Stadium. So we believe Duval may have won the championship that year, and we we were runners up. So we, it was the champions and the runners up played at. Uh, uh, last stadium. That's the big stadium, right? We had to play the Senior Bowl. We used to play semi-pro uh, uh, games up there and whatnot. And we played Municipal Park. So they thought, you know, they thought it was going to be a joke. They thought it was, oh yeah, because they're better equipped. They got like A, B, A team, B team, C team, D team. Some of y'all watching this may remember this. Um, bunch of white boys, a couple of little sprinkles of new Africans here and there. And uh, I think we beat Municipal Park probably 45 to nothing or the six or something like that Duval beat uh, whoever they were playing might have been Tremere might have been 
Yeah, Tremere or somebody like that. Beat them 30-something nothing, you know. Trick was playing running back for them then, number 33. Fall guy was a quarterback. Uh, Raymond, uh, like, uh, Raymond, uh, forgive me, Raymond, if I, I'm not remembering your last name right now because a lot going through my mind. So anyway, beat them, beat, them to, beat them to sleep. They never played us again. They never, they never ever tried to play us again. They, you know, and what I, what I mean by us, like any other inner city parks, never tried it again. What they did, though, they start uh, recruiting in our neighborhoods, showing up at our houses. I don't know where they was getting our addresses from. Long story short, Miss, 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 Miss Fortune was there. Every, every, every minute, every down, every whatever, um, for Duval and us, you know, playing against them white boys, rooting us on, telling us we could beat them white boys. And those were, I remember, li literal words. One time we had a little sideline break or something. Um, she said, they want you to lose because of what you look like. She said that. I remember that very, very vividly. And that came to me last night. Um, she was there when they tried to come in our neighborhoods to recruit us. It was like, nah, nah. This is something I found out later. You know, nah, you're not going to do that. You know. So, um, so okay, so we, we, we spent a lot of time giving them background and all, all that type of stuff. I propose... Because I've, I've, I've mentioned that certain areas, certain parks should be called, uh, should be named after, after Miss Fortune. She was a true gem. Right, look at her last name, Fortune. She gave fortune to us, people like me, people like whoever else play in, that's watching this. Uh, you know, girls and boys. She was big on the softball thing at uh, Gargus Park. Um, so I propose that all of Tomerville... What is now called Tolmanville. First of all, Tolmanville, Tolman, Tolmanville is named after Tolman, which was a, a cracker. That's another story. Look it up for yourself. Tired of black folks living, living in places they don't know the history of it. Like, how you going to live there, especially you born there, and don't know the real history of, of, uh, of a Raleigh, North Carolina, or Mobile, Alabama, or Birmingham, you know, New Orleans and whatnot. How it got its name, you know, the people involved in creating it. Uh, and, of course, our captivity labor labor so-called slave labor uh, our ancestors being involved in that of course you know that automatically um, I propose that Tomoville gets renamed um, fortune um, fortune village now this pause right there was because I just thought, you know, we could take that all the way from Tomerville all the way through to the campground, Fortune Village, right? Uh, name it in a way that they know who we're talking about, you know. Uh, not, not, not that we're just using a name like, oh, this is the fortune area, like the word, the meaning of the word fortune, you know. Um, then there's another proposal. Uh, we can name various areas, uh, Fortune, uh, Fortune Village 1, Fortune Village 2. But then we did, had another thought, too, just now, uh, as we saw a text message come through from one of our, our partners that's probably going to end up watching this. Um, they're gentrifying. They're gentrifying. They're re-gentrifying. That causes, that's a little dilemma right there. How do we how do we how do we deal with that? You know, can we name an area, and then, cause what's what you know that's that goes into another thing where uh, new Africans down there in Mobile and everywhere else uh, are not doing enough to keep their communities from being gentrified. So let's say you know that it's going to happen anyway, right? Unfortunately, you know I have a solution about the gentrification thing, but most people are you know not thinking from an African perspective, so. All I could expect is it's going to get gentrified as it is it's doing. So in that case, if we name an area and the gentrification comes, you know, maybe we could do like a, like a person with a, with a bag, with a packed bag, you know, just just pick, pick up and take the name and and uh, put it put it in the area 
where the majority of, of us are staying. However, there's a problem with that because there is no historical connection to uh, Dawes Road, um, you know, various parts of uh, Far West Mobile that uh, new Africans have been pushed out to in Mobile, Alabama. There has no historical connection. Miss Fortune probably never even went out there because her life's work was right there in, the, in those hoods. So right, in, right when we was doing this video, right then, we just realized the dilemma uh, for this. But can we, for the meantime, start renaming some stuff, at least? You know, this is thought. Now, now somebody might want to uh, rename Tobinville um, something else. Well, at least this dialogue gets that done, gets that started, you know. Um, Maysville could be, be called uh, something, uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, um, Crawford. Like um, the coach that, at Crawford Park, his, his name was actually Crawford. He was a staple there, um, right by the cemetery. Uh, he the head coach for, I don't know, forever, you know. Maybe that... Maybe that whole area in, in uh, Maysville can be renamed uh, Crawford in, in his name, you know, directly. Uh, not the part, but just him in, in general. Um, Peter's Park, where well, it's been renamed Sullivan Park, but Sullivan Sullivan don't got don't have don't have a connection there. Peter's Park, that park should be named Herschel Wilson Park. You know, we got to get it together. We can't just think the words are just light in African culture. Every word counts. How you say something. That's why we only use the word nigger for people that are niggers, that act like niggers. We use the word cracker for every cracker because they're all crackers. Um, we use black American a certain way. We use African a certain way, new African. So, you know, now if you cannot get this legally done, that does not stop you from having your own divine destiny and using these names. See, that's really where I'm at. Because the legal thing is, like, once they get in on it, then it, it becomes a commercial thing. And you have a fortune day, right, uh, at Gargas Park. And it, it ain't no, nobody that looked like me. And you, we don't even know it happened until we come visit somebody. And everybody there is, you know, Yovo. Yovo is a uh, Aja word for non-African. Uh, not just white people, non-African. Uh, if you're not African, you are Yovo. You know, all this Hispanic stuff, all that, it, you Yovo. Um, so this is what I propose, and uh, we, we, we hope to hear uh, from people on this. Uh, uh, Y'all thought maybe I was kidding uh, or just hyped up for a moment. But who gets hyped up about a, a, a staple from the neighborhood while everybody else is getting hyped up for people they see every day? So when you see somebody getting hyped up for a staple from the neighborhood, take them serious. They're serious. Now, I don't even live in Mobile. Haven't been back to Mobile in a long time for, for, for various reasons. Uh, uh, for one thing, you know, I, 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 with all due respect, a lot of black folks down there don't act like they got no sense. I'm talking about old. They're too old to not know, uh, know about their own culture. They're too old to slick reject their culture. You see? So, you know, it's like it's not, nothing. I have had no incentives to come to Mobile. However, I see they like to bring people all the way from Benin. To, to Mobile for the Juneteenth event. They don't even understand what the man talking about. It's funny because I speak the language that they that, that the people that they be bringing there. No, not French, but I'm talking about Ajak Be or so-called Fong Be. You know, uh, they're not bringing it. They're homegrown, uh, which is myself. Uh, but that's cool too because we've been good <laughs> without that. Anyway. And that's going to have a lot of Yovo attachment to it if they were to try to bring me down there. Um, but it's just interesting that they don't bring their own, but they they reaching all the way to the, the Benin. I don't know how many miles that is. Just think, you know, people think Atlanta is far from Mobile. You talk about going across the Olokun, uh, which is the Atlantic Sea, to bring somebody to Mobile that you can't understand because he said, because he, he know about the Clotilda. And the Clotilda came from the area where he's from. Okay. Yeah. But he ain't telling you how to get the yoke of this, this oppression off of you. And of course, that's not through no Black Lives Matter or voting or none of that. You have to take the reins of sovereignty. We call that uh, Mesusinu uh, 
Didon. Uh, that's one word for it um, in the Aja language. But anyway, so there you have it. This this is this is primarily about Miss Floretta Fortune. But what about the other heroes there in Mobile? Let's let's start let's start renaming. We have a book called African Vodou Names. Uh, re rename and reclaim. Uh, and re africanize yeah, that's the subtitle. Rename, reclaim, reclaim, rename, and re africanize So you got to claim it, then you got to name it, which is renaming, in this case, getting our African names back, and um, in the case of the book, and um, re africanize meaning, okay, once you reclaim, once you name, now you go through the process of, of going back to your original African self. This video is not about that per se it could lead to that for some people um, but I you know I'm, I'm tired of the hero worship and the martyrdom that these people give to, to all these people that never really meant us no good like this guy got killed by the police that's one thing that's that's a that's a that's that wasn't for to happen like that over a $20 um, uh, counterfeit bill but So in Ghana, they, they, they put him, his name on the wall of fame. What did he do to, for, for, for African people? Oh, he, uh, for y'all, well, any, I hope nobody is watching this that love white folk. But what, for the people that happen to get hold of this, that do hang out with white people and, 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 and whatever, he ain't even done nothing for them. Except for they, uh, the poor white trash of theirs. You know, and it's surprising, but not, to see so many black women Black American women, but then that's the key phrase, black American. But anyway, to see so many black American women um, supporting this, and they, they, you know, they say they're doing it for a bigger cause. But see, that's, it's one thing to protest injustice. This guy got slammed down in front of me with the, by the police. That's in, unjust. I'm, that's not right. I'm going to address that. But I'm not going to make him no martyr and put his name on something, especially when I know he's a sellout to my, to, to my people, to his own people. His or her own people. No, that ain't how that's supposed to go. We're the only ones that reward our sellouts. Look around in Chi uh, China during the uh, uh, revolution period in China. The children, if they found out their parents were selling out Chinese culture, Chinese ideal that they were going for, they were off them. Literally, this is a fact. You can look that up. They would get rid of them. It happened even in India with uh, certain revolutions they had. You know. So I, I don't understand why we are still the only people that, you know, love our enemies and allow our sellouts to, to live. Uh, a matter of, not, not just that, because, you know, don't nobody want to go to jail. But you don't only let them live. That might be by force, right? But you elevate them. People, are you think y'all think people going to take you serious like that? Excuse me. No. Because I don't take you serious, and I, I, I look just like you. So I know they don't take you serious, and I know how they think, you know. But they're going to sit back and let you do the little running around in the street, and dancing, buck dancing with uh, the police in Atlanta. You supposed to be down there protesting about this same guy, c concerning the same guy, and you down there doing the, uh, you, like you in Brandis, doing the uh, Step in the Name of Love dance. Whatever that's called, it's line dancing or whatever. But you supposed to be down there protesting. Then you crying all on the news, talking about, oh, this is just all I wanted. Then they told you, hey, we about to lock this down in 30 minutes. This is a true fact, by the way. We about to lock this down in 30 minutes. So we about to put these shields up. Y'all gonna have to get on. The same person that you was dancing next to, the National Guard. Who's gonna take you serious? And so, that's in line with, with us, with, with, with this Mobile thing. Who's going to take you serious in Mobile when you, you can't honor somebody that was a visual, visual figure? This is not nobody from, that you never saw except for on a video or something. Like Malcolm X. Nobody, we, we, nobody my age uh, uh, ever met him uh, or saw him face to face. Never saw him in the hood, but he was for African people, right, in general. But... We saw Miss Floretta 
Fortune. I should have been saying her name more during this video. Floretta Grayson Fortune or Mrs. Fortune. We saw her every day. And if you didn't see her every day, saw her every Saturday. Every, every Saturday, all day, because it was pl plenty of games played back to back. Every Saturday you saw her. Even if you didn't play, but you came to see us play, you saw her. And you look her up, look her name up, you're like, oh, that's, you know, that's who, that's, that's who that is, okay, yeah. Yeah, I know that lady, yeah. You know, can't nobody, no, nobody's gonna take you serious when you're voting for a mayor because they throw some barbecues and gave you some hot dogs. Uh, that's what we understand, and many people have told us. That's how the mayor, the current mayor, it might be the current or the one before it, not sure. Uh, but how some kind of white mayor got in office in Mobile because they was throwing parties for y'all. I stand strong about my relationship with Mobile, that I'm from there. Uh, I meet people. Uh, they, they, they offend me. They find out they offend me quickly when they say stuff like, well, we can't believe you from Mobile. What are you talking about? I'm from, what are you talking about? What are you saying, you know? Because they think we Bamas and, and, and we and nobody can be speaking four African languages uh, and be from Mobile. No. Mobile couldn't have produced an African king, no. Couldn't do that, you know? So I let them know all the time, I'm from Mobile and I mention people's names and experiences that we've had, the good stuff now. You know, uh, nobody is getting, <laughs> anybody watching is nobody, no, nothing crazy is being told. Um, yeah. So here we are. Now, this is my, probably my 10th time touting this thing about misfortune and taking yourself divinity. This is the first lengthy video I've did on it. Uh, now, what you gonna do? I'm not playing. This is not no... No, no fad. George Floyd is a fad. This little Black Lives Matter is a is a fad. Misfortune was it's a staple. That's not a fad. That's life. She gave us life. What you gonna do now? Odigba.